Hello, um, I'm going to do a test in KDN Live because I think I noticed that if you move things in different ways, you can cause uh, unpleasant effects. So what we're going to do is we're going to render a 10 second clip and we're going to move a cat on a white background. All right. So there are different methods to move things in KDN Live. The most simple one is to use uh, the composite uh, transition. And it's definitely a like something that uh, a user used to older versions would probably use because you always had to use composite manually if you wanted to have an image on top of another or a video on top of another. All right, so what you would do is you would have your starting keyframe and then you would go to the end of the animation. Add another keyframe and uh, just decide where. Well, let's use a slider. Just gonna move it to where you would want it to be at the end. And then it gets animated. So I'm just going to render that. Uh, so I'm just going to render that. So now we're going to do another method. We're going to remove this transition and we're going to use a filter. I mean an effect. Um, what was it? Zoom and pan. Zoom pan? Position? I guess position. Uh, I think that was, uh, that used to be called differently. Anyway, we're gonna... Anyways, we're gonna have this keyframe. We're gonna jump to the end. Add another and move it over. Okay, the exact value was 1413. And now we're going to render this as well. So you probably already noticed using the effect costs about 50% more, if not more. Uh, that's a shame, but I think this will enhance quality. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to import both these videos, the composite movement and the position and zoom effect movement, uh, or uh, the composite transition versus the position and zoom effect. And we're going to take a look. First the composite, and for that we're going to get as much as we can here and let's see that's a shame uh, let's see if we can see this way okay so we're gonna go frame by frame I'm not sure if I see it yet, but I think there might be the issue that between two frames, sometimes the distance the cat travels differs. Now we're with, within the position and zoom effect render, and we're going to go frame by frame. And I'm not getting this feeling here. It really feels like every step is exactly the same distance. Now let me think, how can we, how can we, I guess we got just got, have to apply a zoom effect here. Uh, oops. So let's go to effects, uh, use zoom on both of them. Properties, we're going to zoom to mm, mm, 200 and 200. Let's hope that the zoom 
will not affect our ability to inspect this. You know what? <clears throat> 400. Okay, so now we're gonna... I mean, I could play it back, but that would be useless. I will um, attach the videos to the end of this video, hoping that uh, re-rendering them will not screw up uh, the pixels. But if I would play them back right now, it would be very slow, because my computer isn't super fast. Yeah, I can clearly see some steps are bigger, some other steps are smaller. And now if we look at the effect movement, All steps are the same size. All right, we're gonna take it to the next level. <clears throat> we're gonna go to enhance. Uh, whoops, that was not what I wanted. Um, enhance. Let's see, can we see anything? Uh, let's see, let's see, 10,000. Was it? 100,000, 10,000. Hmm. 20,000? Okay, well, how about 1,000? Okay, again, I'm sorry, I'm wasting a lot of time. Okay, 18,000 uh, versus minus, minus uh, 8,000, okay? Yeah, here we go. And we're gonna do the same here. Minus 8,000. Okay, so what can we do now? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4. Right, so let's go step by step. Um, we're still not close enough. But if you have a good eye for these things, and if my render quality is good enough, you will notice that the, um, how do you call it, Inter interlaced, the interlaced pixels change. Correction, I was trying to say interpolated, not interlaced, come on. It means this image is rescaled on each step. But if we are over here, I think the pixels are always the same. Yeah, they totally are. And now you should really be able to see how jump, small, jump, small, jump, small, small, jump, small, jump, small, jump. All right, <clears throat> so clearly we can see if you use the composite effect to move objects, they will move very unnaturally. It will be subtle, but noticeable. The video will be just weird. Um, and if you use the position and zoom effect, that would will be fine, but it will take 60% um, more time to render. May Wait, actually it was twice the time, wasn't it? Yeah, it's pretty much double. Holy crap. But you know, you can't beat quality. Or basically you could just consider that the um, composite transition movement is just a preview kind of thing. All right, I really did this for myself because I, I just needed to be sure that this uh, problem exists so I know what I have to use when I want quality. But I hope it will help you as well. And now I'm just gonna play back. So now I'm playing back both videos. First, we're looking at the um, the composite movement using the transition, and as you can see, it's rather jagged. And we're gonna zoom in later. And now we're looking at the position and zoom effect movement, and it's smooth.
And now this is a zoomed in version of a composite movement transition. And here we have a zoomed in version of a position and zoom effect movement. So again, I hope this helped. Please like and subscribe and see you in the next video. Goodbye.